synthesis and working on ideas. A, a, a lot of what I have been doing in the world has been trying to figure out how to take some of the best ideas of the progressive community into uh, red state America. And um, for me, I, I mean, all business has really been uh, the kind of missing link. And what David says about growing communities being a sort of centerpiece of building a new economy uh, that, that is consistent with, consistent with community, consistent uh, with environmental uh, uh, remediation is, 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 I think, a very, very important piece of this. Um, Within Bali, we, we kind of come to the conclusion that the uh, old style 1950s, 1960s model of economic growth, uh, which, which really relied pretty heavily on large scale industry and large scale unions, is no longer going to work. Um, and and uh, instead, what, what we see as kind of centerpiece is, as the state has said, the growth and expansion of wholesale entrepreneurship, uh, particularly entrepreneurs who are focused on higher level labor and environmental standards. Um, and I thought I would just mention, you know, five studies done over the last 40 years that kind of underscored the some old, some new. Um, right after World War II, um, Two sociologists, D. Wright Mills and Melvin, not Melvin L. Holder, um, did a study for the U.S. government looking at the relationship between uh, all business communities and manufacturer and just communities. But what they found was that those communities that rely mostly on small businesses had uh, more balanced civic life and greater well-being by a bunch of sociological measures performed better. Uh, this study was updated about 15 years ago by a sociologist at Cornell named Tom Lyson, uh, who looked at a 226 manufacturing dependent communities and, and found that actually that, that other communities uh, had a much higher score on quality uh, once they started to embrace a small business paradigm of economic development. Uh, Tom Power, who is an economist in uh, the University of, uh, of Montana, uh, did a study looking at a bunch of counties in the United States and a bunch of states in the United States in the 1970s and found that those states with the highest per capita income growth actually had the most modest overall levels of economic growth. In other words, you know, something that had paper growth, sudden burst of growth, like a Las Vegas, tended to draw a lot of you know, people from the outside in, and then it was a boom and bust economy, and when things went bust, everyone had lower levels of income. So it's sort of underscored that the slow and steady growth around small businesses was a much more reliable way to build a quality. Um, last year, in Harvard Business Review, uh, two Harvard economists, Ed Glazer and William Kerr, um, had a short piece to sort of summarize some longer pieces that they've done. They did a regression analysis of 200 metropolitan areas in the United States and found that those areas with the highest density of all businesses have the highest levels of job growth. And then another article published just this past year in the Journal called the Economic Development Quarterly, uh, which normally is pretty antithetical, pretty uh, uh, broadest about small businesses, uh, nevertheless has a piece to show that their, their regression analysis um, found that small uh, business densities was higher per capita income growth. And this was done uh, by two Penn, Penn State economists, uh, David Fleming and Stephen Gett. So, I mean, you put these all together, and I think what it shows is that there's a very 
very high correlation uh, between the presence of small entrepreneurial businesses in our community and uh, equality, income growth, and job growth. Now, those correlations don't necessarily indicate all the levels of causality. And, and I, I think, you know, if, if one puzzles over this all of that, uh, you really see the causality going in both directions. That is to say, uh, in communities where there is a very high presence of small businesses, um, because they are producing so many jobs, because they are producing lots of new pockets of decentralized wealth, because they are generating a new source of attack base for a community and a new source for public infrastructure, those small businesses are certainly leading to greater equality. And it's worth mentioning here that unlike many of their U.S. compatriots, uh, Canadian unions have understood this relationship, and some of the strongest supporters of quality life work with small businesses and, and local purchasing have been pushed by the public employees union in Canada. Um, the closing also goes in the other direction, which is to say, um, where there is more quality, there also is going to be a lot more small business formation. Um, you know, and I think I think David touched on one point, which is to say that when you have well-educated middle-class individuals, many of them will naturally turn to entrepreneurship. When wealth is spread fairly evenly, you can find more people are going to be investing locally in their businesses, whether through banks and credit unions or through other more advanced investment schemes. When consumers are well educated in a more equal society, I think they are more capable of discerning value from price. And when you're able to discern value from price, you tend to buy more local goods and services more of the time. And I think finally that a more equal society tends to be one that has more confidence in itself. More of the sense that the solutions to its economy lie within rather than trying to attract or retain a small number of big outside corporations to sort of march in and save the day. So I, I, I guess I would just say bottom line that, that Small businesses, even though I, I, I think they've been treated rather marginally by progressives historically, have more and more become an enormously important centerpiece for how one rethinks uh, their approach to the economy. And, uh, you know, over, I, Occupy Wall Street, in my view, is going sooner or later sort of morph into exit Wall Street and put your money back on King Street. And uh, so, so that's why I learned this discussion is extremely important because we really are at a crossroads where literally trillions of dollars in our pension funds that are being misstockly invested in Wall Street and begin to move back to Main Street and make a difference both for equality and in 